I'm so glad we can get together for our class eight, module eight, piano class on this wonderful spring day in Wisconsin. So as always, we're gonna start with a little bit of review. So if you can turn in your books to page 54, module seven, we're just gonna go over a few of these things because this lays the foundation for everything that's ahead. The material that's in this week's module, module eight, as well as your future study is taking piano further. And so what we're gonna do is take a look on page 54 and just go over these chords. So the chords are listed there. We have a C chord, an F chord, and a G chord. We talked about this last lesson. These are triads. It's easy to identify triads because the three notes are equally stacked up top. So they're gonna be space, 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 or line, line, line. So that you can, you can recognize a triad easily. And when I'm talking about triad right now, I'm referring to root position triads. We also talked last week about inverted triads, but for right now, I'm just talking about root position. And you can make a root position triad, triad on any note you want. There's my C triad or my C chord. I can go on F. G, and so I can make any triad. Now those, those three, I can just play the white keys and that's gonna be the proper sound. Other triads like D, it's actually gonna use a black key in the middle. And we can learn that down the road into how to create any triad in any key, but you actually have the tools to be able to do that. But for right now, we're focusing on C, F and G. And so last lesson, we practiced playing those chords and introduced it into When the Saints Go Marching In. And that was where we started talking about what a lead sheet is. A lead sheet is just the melody and then chord symbols above. And it's our job to take the, that melody. We can logically play that in our right hand because we probably want the, the melody above the accompaniment and then we can play the chords in the left hand. So I can play with the saints um, just with triads built, built on it. I'm just gonna play one whole note triad for every chord, and then I will play the melody as written. So when I have my hands that close together, I run into a little collision between hands. My right hand is kind of crossing into the left hand and it makes it a little tricky, but it works. I could also move that melody up. The nice thing about lead sheets is anything goes. You can make this your own. It's a little bit different style of playing because it's not telling you exactly what to play. You're given a left hand, and you're giving what something to do with the right hand. I could play it. I could play any number of ways. Uh, playing double notes with the with the two fingers. I could play single notes. Um, and we did we explored that a little bit last week um, with different styles I, that I demonstrated on page fifty six. We talked about, at the top of that page, closed position triads. And that's, that's where we started getting to something kind of tricky, where it's those inverted triads. And so we have our C chord. We're going to leave that in root position. But rather than play the F chord, um, where I'm jumping so far to get to it, I'm going to invert the, uh, the F chord. I'm going to put the F on top and do it one more time. So now I have a C on the bottom, an F in the middle, an A on top. And that's the chord they have written there. So the second chord. So we have our C chord, our F chord, our C chord. And then we have, in the same way, we have an inverted G7 chord. Seven chords always has four notes. 
And of those four notes, we have notes that there's kind of a hierarchy. The root is most important, third is next most important, and the seventh is the third, third place. The fifth is the fourth and kind of the expendable note. And in this case, we're not even playing that fifth. The fifth would be the D, but just to make it simple and keep everything to three notes, we're just doing the, the root, the third, and the seventh. And so we have a little progression there. And on what we did in class was we went back to when the Saints go marching in, and I introduced how to play that in the same way seven that's inverted so the chord right here and that way I only had to move my hand just a little bit you can kind of see it in the video very small amount of movement really simplifies things and then we continue in the same way now I played that F chord the one right here on page 56 and again, very little movement. This whole progression has much less movement than you can see why you have a lot less chance of missing notes. It's so much easier to play to just stay with those close position. All right, we had several songs there. I know where I'm going, where we could um, play and I'm going to demonstrate a few of these this will be a different class today because we can't really play together but I'm going to encourage you at different times to stop the recording and just think try try a song by yourself and you can do this however you want but just so you can try some of these on your own um, and, and, and be able to practice them let me demonstrate I know where I'm going challenges in O Lonesome Me is where in by measure eight you change hand positions. Notice that G has a finger number two so I'll place my finger number two on G and then it says one on the E and I can move my five up to C naturally and my A will play or my three will play that A. So thumb needs to move to F. It was on E. I'll move it to F. And now my thumb moves back to E. So that whole section has a big change of position. Take some time to try all of the songs in these these units and just a, a, on your own time to try that you'll t t especially a, a spot where you have that finger change that's a good skill to learn and will really help you in the future as you choose your own music that you can learn and that you can play out of any book that you want to play I pointed out how on page 59, My Heart Will Go On, the love theme from Titanic is a wonderful one to take a look at because it gives us the best of both worlds. We have the written out chords on the page as well as the chord symbols. So we can see in one place how, how a good way to voice this. I'm going to play this one for you. 
and you can kind of hear and may perhaps see my hands how that uh, see in my hands um, how that is played. I tried to show you it clearly as I played, but take a look at pay, uh, bar 11, uh, right on the third line there. I want to take the G pickup, which is the last note of the line above. Um, in fact, no, I'll start at the repeat sign on that C with my third finger. I'm just going to play. I'll say the finger numbers as I go. Three, four, one. Got to jump clear up to five for that G. Five. Now we're just going to walk down. Four, three, two. Now it has a circled four, so I'm going to put my fourth finger on that E. Four, five, four, three, two, one, two, one. And my two will just cross over. Can't see that real well on the video, but I'll try to show you. I'll show you this, this hand. So it just reaches right over. And so it's going from the... From the B, I want to play the A, and then naturally my G, my thumb can go back to G, and I'm all set to play it again. Four, one, five, four, three, two, fourth finger, four, five, four, three, two, one, two. We're gonna to go to the second ending. One, two, three, four, three, two. So it's a fun one to play. It has some nice fingerings, some good challenges to do. And now let's move on to the material in Module 8. So I'm on page 60 in the book. 6-0, Module 8, our last lesson. Exciting. Uh, finish this book. You guys have progressed in so many ways. I think back to how we started out with, you know, such basic things. But it was really good to make sure we all have that same foundation and that we progressed. And some of these things you could grasp right away. Other of these things you're going to be working on for quite some time. And it just takes some time to develop on your hands and you kind of get in your mind that it works. But just be patient with that. Certain things you'll get right away and other things just keep keep working on it. Keep keep trying it. And the more you do that, soon you'll you'll kind of click and you'll you'll have it happening. We're talking about major and minor triads. So we were talking about triads just a few moments ago. That root position and, and, and all of that. Well, we're going to talk back to the root position triads. And we have our C triad. And then they wrote one up there. F triad. I'll play it down here so you can see it on the video. It's obvious it's written up higher on the page. But just so you can kind of see what I'm doing, it's F, A, C. Now, they write the, wrote that, then the shape for that. They, they drew it with squares. Maybe we could call them Legos or something, little white Legos. We have white, white, white. To get a major triad, we have what's called a major third on the bottom and a minor third on top. I like counting it one, two, three, four, five. Five notes from the bottom note to the top for the major, one, two, three, four, five. I'm meaning every note, including black, not just white. One, two, three, four, five, there's our major third. And then a minor third is one, two, three, four. It's one note smaller. And again, we're using white and black. And together, that gives us that F chord. There's the major third. There's the minor third. 
together, it makes the major triad. And we can do that on any note. Let me do it on a C chord. Two, three, four, five. There's our major third. One, two, three, four. Now we really didn't need to figure this one out because we learned it last week. That's our C triad. But now let's try one, one of those ones I just said a little while ago that is going to use the black keys. So let's take, let's create one on D. major third, and then I got to go up a minor third. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So notice it's white, black, white. That's what they're designating there. I can go to any note. Let's take an E. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, my E chord, white, black, white. How about F? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. G. A. Remember, I'm counting up one, two, three, four, five to get the major third, and one, two, three, four, including the top and bottom one. So you get the sound of that. That's the major third. It has that major, you know, sometimes we call that the happier sound. And that's the minor. Sometimes we refer to that as more sad or reflective. And um, you'll get used to hearing those, and you'll be able to find that so easy. So you can find any triad. Now, here's one of the coolest things in music. So a major triad we just talked about is, is built with a major third on the bottom and a minor third on top. A minor triad is just the opposite. Minor third on the bottom and a major third on top. Let's build one. We're going to build one on C. Now, if you look on page 61 at the top, you'll see why that is. Because a major triad simply has a lower third. And that's why we have the minor third on the bottom and the major on top. It just... And so you have that different sound. And again, the more you play those, the more you'll get that in your ear that you can just recognize. That's that happier, that major sound. And that's that maybe more serious, reflective, perhaps even sad, minor sound. On page 62, we have the song Scarborough Affair, and we have a mix of chords and written out left hand. So you kind of have a choice there. You can do with it what you want. I would suggest doing it both ways, learning it so that you can play the left hand has written and that you could play the left hand using the chord symbols as well and perhaps even create your own arrangement. Remember in class last week, I showed how just by changing a few notes, and especially when you have those chord symbols in a lead sheet, you can create wonderful things that come from your own heart. That's your own creation, and that's what you're making music, and that's where some real enjoyment comes from. Let me play Scarborough Fair for you as written. You can follow along in your books. I'll show your, uh, turn the video to show my hands so you can see what's happening. And then I'm going to go ahead and play it being a little more creative, perhaps, taking the chord symbols and showing you how you could develop this into something that maybe kind of excites you and is fun to do. Before I take it in, in my own version, I want to show you a few things just uh, that will help you along. Note the finger numbers. When a piece gives you finger numbers, 
Take advantage of that. So five, three, one for the first chord. Now, I don't have a sixth finger. There's nothing down here to hit this C, so I need to pick up my hand. And I'm gonna put my five there. In fact, in your book, I would suggest writing a five under that C in the left hand, the third measure, because then you can easily move your four to the next D in the fourth measure, your twos on the F in measure five, and your four is back on D, and then the next measure, two, one, four, four, two, two, five, two, five, five, two. So, I'll play the whole left hand. Now in music, oftentimes there's multiple good ways to finger. I'm going to show you an even better way to finger. The way I just showed you is great, and that'll work super for you. Here's one little alternative you could do that maybe you'll find easier. 5-3-1, as written. Now, even though my 5 is on D, I'm going to lift my hand up and move my 4 to D. Why? Because now I don't have to do another jump. to the left hand of the song and made my jump in measure two rather than in measure three. It's your choice. I think in my own performance, I probably would choose option two just because I think overall I would be more accurate, but nothing wrong with uh, number one. All right, I'm going to play this now. We have chord symbols on it and I'm going to start what's there, but then I'm going to try to develop it a little bit and just have some fun. some wonderful things. If I added some pedal to that. that time I added a little bit of time out in one of the measures that I just felt needed a little bit of time and did the octave melody rather than the single notes again we're developing things we're taking things making it our own having some fun and just developing things and I think the bottom line is playing from our hearts so I hope that shows you and gives you some tips to being able to play those songs and develop them be able to have some fun just Make having uh, just having a good time doing that. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate Unchained Melody as well as Try to Remember for you. So uh, both of these have just chords and melody. They're just lead sheets. So I'm going to take a little bit of liberty. Now, there would be nothing wrong just playing a root position triads. There's nothing wrong doing basic inverted. And there's certainly nothing wrong with creating something of your own that's special. All right, just enjoy.
things about doing video, sometimes things go wrong. And I think the little mistake I made sounded quite nice. But I'll play measure 17 to the end correctly just so you can have a better idea of that rhythm. And you can decide whether you like my mistake better or if you like what's written. play this is and so forth lots of things you can do let me move forward to try to remember I use that for this one it has that nice waltz feel in 3-4 So you have the tools to do that. Now you might say, Mike, when I do it, it doesn't sound like that. And you know, I kind of expect that. It takes a while to develop. It takes time to develop these things. But there's nothing I did there that you haven't been given the tools to do that you haven't even done already. So and you're not gonna notice that for try to remember, I actually chose to do root triads rather than the voicings because I thought for the waltz feel I felt that sounded a little better how do you come to that you just try things and you notice I made a big mistake with the rhythm in Unchained Melody did I get excited about it and say oh no I was a failure here I am trying to be a piano teacher and I can't even read the rhythm you know, I probably should have got it right on the first try, but I think maybe it was a good example of we don't get excited about a mistake. We then decide, is this something that I should fix that mistake? I mean, if it's something... Uh, perhaps we should fix that. But if you, if you hit a wrong note that sounds great in this style of music, you can go with it. You can create something special. And so we make choices. If we're playing Mozart, we would probably play it the way it's written. Or we probably really should play it the way it's written with Beethoven, Rachmaninoff, Chopin, any of the classical composers. We, we, we try to play it as established in the composition. But with lead sheets, we're given the freedom to make it our own. Again, to play from our heart. I hope you've enjoyed our class together, our eight sessions. We had kind of an interesting season with lots of weather issues, and here we are again. We think we're in spring, and I'm making this video early with the assumption that it looks like the weather report is probably going to lead us to a decision that we probably should stay safe and not go out in the midst of a storm. But So I miss seeing you on our last session together, but my hope is that this isn't our last session because we have a whole new session that's starting up right away. I think I mentioned this last week, but in case you didn't, uh, in case you didn't catch it, we are going to be having a continued session. And when we did that survey a few weeks ago, it seemed like the consensus was to go into pop hits. And so this is from the same author, the piano fun that we've been doing. And so it'll be written much the same with the tracks that you can choose to play with. Or as we did in the lesson, we didn't even use tracks. The tracks are wonderful, and it's a great way, an encouraging way to play. But it's also fun to have to do it by yourself, too, and maybe gives you that freedom. The way the Piano Fun Pop Hits works is we won't have specific lessons 
in that you're learning skills. It's basically song by song by song. And there are a wonderful list of songs in that book. What we'll do is take a piece. In each piece, they give us both the lead sheet as well as a written out arrangement. And our plan for most songs, if not all of the songs, will be to learn both the written arrangement as well as take the lead sheet and learn to play it from our hearts and being able to express it and do it our own way, reading from the chords, because that develops a skill. We may even throw in another song along the way if there's something that somebody would really like to do and they can find a, uh, music online, a chart, a lead sheet of, uh, or you can ask me, I have access to a lot of lead sheets and we could perhaps come up with a, a, another song that we might even try. But it'll be a fun class, a little bit different, but it will, in, in that way that it's based on songs and not focused on here's a new technique, now we get to this technique and this technique, we're learning repertoire and you'll have songs that you can play. And so it'll be a lot of fun to do it. Again, it's eight sessions and the sign up is right away. I mean, you can let me know ASAP so I can make sure I have a book for you. We just go right on. We're going to be meeting at the one o'clock hour on Thursdays. And that has a max of eight people. So I would encourage you to sign up. I sure hope that you will join us. But if you can't, continue on this semester or for this next coming semester, I really hope that you do continue to practice. Take these songs that we've been learning and learn them better. Keep developing. See, see what you can learn and see what you can do on your own. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you anytime about further opportunities. There will be future classes. There's always the option of private lessons. Summer is a wonderful time to try that because we do very flexible schedules because everybody's we all have vacation times and things like that that we need. So it's just the time of year where a lot of things are flexible. And so if you'd like to try a private lesson, that's a great way to uh, move a lot faster and be able to have a lesson tailored specifically for your own needs. But I think my biggest challenge to you is keep playing. Use the, the skills you have and make piano fun. Enjoy playing. Keep playing it and you know, share it with others. I hope to see you in a class again very soon. Thanks so much for a great semester.